Hi, welcome to another video on financial math for actuarial exam two. In the last couple videos, we've introduced the idea of immunization, both Reddington and full immunization. In this video, we'll continue that. We're looking at October 2018 SOA sample exam problem number 127. Determining, first of all, an asset cash flow to match two things, match the duration and present value of a liability cash flow. And then, as part of the problem statement, as part of the possible answers, we want to check to see if the conditions for Reddington immunization are satisfied or not. And I'm actually going to tell you that the answer to that ahead of time, amazingly, Reddington immunization is not satisfied, which is going to seem strange because, after all, these first couple of videos, we didn't have to think about whether Reddington, whether Reddington immunization was satisfied or not. We just solved the problem, and evidently it did work. It was Reddington immunized, though I did talk about why in those videos. But in this one, just doing those basic things that involve solving for the unknowns is not enough to achieve Reddington or full immunization. So the problem statement is as follows. A company owes 500 and 1,000 to be paid, so these are liabilities, at the end of year one and year four, respectively. The company will set up an investment program to match, again, the duration and the present values of the above obligation. Match, duration, and present values. Using a certain interest rate, these things are always with respect to a certain interest rate. In the simplest situation like this, we are assuming the yield curve is flat. Things could be more complicated by assuming a non-flat yield curve, but we want to keep things simple. We've got an annual effective interest rate of 10%. We want some assets that are going to help us to cover those liabilities. We want an investment program that's going to produce asset cash flows of X today and Y in three years. Two things again, calculate X and then also determine whether the investment program satisfies the conditions for Reddington immunization. And again, I'm going to tell you the answer ahead of time here is that it will not. Which will bring up then a question of, well, why not? Is there something we can do to fix it to satisfy Reddington immunization? And so I'm going to explore that probably in the blog post for this video. The blog post being at infinityisreallybig.com. That's my blog. Um, and I probably, maybe in the next video, maybe in a couple videos, we'll also explore it a little bit with a new video. I'll probably use Mathematica to help me explore it a little bit about what, why it doesn't work and, and can it be fixed or not. By the way, it's still, it, you know, Achieving a match of duration and present value is still probably a good idea, even if you cannot achieve immunization. The immunization just protects you against small changes in the interest rates. Um, when we're not in immunized, yet we have matched the duration and present value, we can maybe still make adjustments, either by changing our investments or maybe in changing our cash flows, getting more cash, we can still cover our liabilities. So Reddington immunization or full immunization is not always achievable, it is ideal you might say, but maybe adjustments can still be made in real life. All right, let's set up our time diagram. So our important times here are time zero, time one, time three, and time four. We'll put the liabilities closer to the line here, 500 at time one and 1,000 at time four. And then X is paid now, that's an asset, so I'm going to put it higher at time zero and Y at time three. Two video go, videos ago, in the first video about immunization, we did talk about matching present values to help us solve for the unknowns. The last video, number 170, we said that you don't really have to think about it in terms of present values. You can think about it in terms of time evaluation of these cash flows at different moments in time, some positive moments in time, and you can still get the same answer. This is phrased in terms of present value. I think I will go back to thinking about present values for this video. So you've got the present value of the asset cash flow as a function of an arbitrary interest rate. <clears throat> um, you want to think of these as functions of i so you can differentiate them when you solve these problems, but then you do the matching by plugging in the specific value of i that you're talking about. x is already at time zero. It does not need to be discounted. y is at time three. Multiply that by v cubed, which is 1 plus i to the negative 3. And then the present value of the liability cash flow as a function of i, you have 500, which needs to come back by one year. Multiply by 1 plus i to the negative 1. And the 1,000 needs to come back by four years. Multiply by 1 plus i to the negative 4. Okay? And 
You know, if you're trying to calculate away as fast as you can to solve the problems as fast as you can, probably the first thing to do is at least take the first derivatives here. And then if you see, oh, I need to check to see if Reddington immunization is satisfied or not, then you'd also know you'd for sure want to take the second derivatives. X is a constant with respect to I. Its derivative is zero. Differentiate this. The negative three will come down and become a negative four. Of course, technically speaking, you also multiply times the derivative of one plus I because of the chain rule, but that derivative is one, so you don't have to write it down. Same kind of thing happens with the liabilities. And we're going to get negative 500, 1 plus i to the negative 2 times 1. And then a minus 4,000, 1 plus i to the negative 5 times 1. We do need the second derivatives here because we are checking for Reddington immunization or not. Bring down the negative 4, get positive 12y, 1 plus i to the negative 5. And uh, for the second derivative of the liability present value, we get positive 1,000. 1 plus i to the negative um, 3 plus 20,000, 1 plus i to the negative 6. All right, so we've found our derivatives. Now we need to use the first couple, the functions and their derivatives, to solve for x and y. We only need x as far as the problem statement goes, but we will need y to help us solve for x. Plug in i equals 0.1. So matching these present values for the assets and liabilities produces this equation. As I mentioned in the first, these first last first couple of videos, I could also think about the difference function. I call it h of i when we're thinking about present values, just like Broverman's book does. Thinking about that as a difference, p a of i minus p l of i, and I could differentiate that as well and decide whether the um, set that function and its derivative equal to zero at i equals 0.1 instead of this. It's another way to think about it. Uh, so plug in i equals 0.1 here. I get x plus um, y times 1.1 to the negative 3. Plug in i equals 0.1 here and here, and I'll get 500 times 1.1 to the negative 1 plus 1,000 times 1.1 to the negative 4. I'm going to use my calculator here and as, as fast as I can. I know that's not the most exciting part of these things. So I will need the quantity 1.1 to the negative 1, first of all. So there it is right there. That's my V. I'll store that in register 0. I'm going to be storing lots of quantities here, so you're going to want to keep track of things. There's V. I need to multiply it times 500. I'll store that in register 1. And then also find V to the fourth times 1,000. Don't need to store that. Add it to what's in register 1. I see that the right-hand side here becomes... 1137.55891. I think I'll store that in register 9. I'll put a little note to myself over here. Store that in register 9. Um, I also may want to store the value that's the coefficient of y there. V, v to the third power, 0.75. 131480. I'll store that in register 8. So that's my notation to remind myself that that's stored in register 8. Okay, that's good enough for the first equation at the moment. Um, now take second equation from matching the derivatives. And again, when you match present values, you, you're matching these functions. When you match the derivatives as well, you're matching durations. Think about it in terms of modified duration. Both of these things are going to be matching. First derivative for both of these functions at 0.1, equivalent to setting h prime of 0.1 equal to 0. Look at this expression right here. Negative 3y times plug in i equals 0.1. 1.1 to the negative 4 must equal, look at this expression here, negative 500 times 1.1 to the negative 2 minus 4,000 times 1.1 to the negative 5. Of course, I could multiply everything by negative 1 to make those negative signs go away. I'll just do that in my head here, and effectively on my calculator, I won't bother writing it down. Let's look here. So v squared times 500. Store that in register 1. And then over here, I've got v to the fifth times 4,000 
add that to what's in register one. The right hand side becomes this number here, technically with a minus sign, although again, I, I multiplied both sides by negative one in my mind. I'll store that in register. Oh, let me write it down here. I'll write it down on this piece of paper with a minus sign. Uh, I guess I'll store that in register seven. Store seven. Let's find one uh, v to the fourth power times three. Okay, again the minus signs will cancel here. This is what I'm going to have to divide both sides by to get uh, what y is. And again the minus signs are already canceled, including where I stored it. So I'm just going to take the reciprocal of this and multiply it by what's in register seven. And I get the value of y, 1413.787879. Um, that is the value of y, and I will need it for checking to see that Reddington immunization, ultimately, again, the answer will be that it's not satisfied. I can also multiply it by what's in register 8, and then subtract that from what's in register 9 to solve for x, negative plus register 9, x using that equation and this fact is about 75.36 is what this is. That approximates to 75 which is one of the answers, one of the possibilities for x. This part one of the five answers but it occurs in more than one place. It occurs in one spot where it said it is Reddington immunized and it occurs in another spot where it says it's not Reddington immunized. So you can't just solve for x. Part of the point of the problem is to think about Reddington immunization. So let's look at these second derivative. And in fact, let me go ahead and think about it as h double prime of 0.1, where h of i again is this difference here. It's going to be p a double prime of 0.1 minus p l double prime of 0.1. So that's going to be um, let's go ahead and just calculate this with the calculator. Here's PA double prime. Plug in I equals 0.1 there. So I get V to the fifth power is this times 12 times the value of Y, which I guess I did not store, times 1413.787879. I get about let me just use an approximation here, 10,534. And then PL double prime of 0.1, plug in 0.1 right there. Uh, so I got V to the third power times 1,000. Store that in register one. And this is gonna make the ma major contribution here, V to the sixth power times 20,000 add that to what's in the register 1. I'm subtracting approximately 12,041 here. The key thing is that's negative, okay? So if that's negative, that means we're not Reddington immunized. Not Reddington immunized. And that is part of the answer as well. Reddington immunization well, first of all, let me just circle this and let me say these two combine to give the correct answer to be A. That's option A on the exam. Reddington immunization means you've got a local minimum for H of I at I equals 0.1 in this case. This, you know, the second derivative test would say you've got a local minimum. The second derivative being negative actually means you've got a concave down graph, so you have a local maximum for H of I at I equals 0.1 you're not ready to immunize, this function is going to be negative in value when i is close to 0.1, uh, which in a sense is bad, okay? Because it says if i changes a little bit from away from 0.1, you're in a defi deficit position of your assets with respect to your liabilities. They're not gonna cover your liabilities. Again, that could be made up for by making your asset cash flows bigger in this situation. Uh, but you might, again, wonder why. Why can, is it not possible to Reddington immunize this here? And is there some way to adjust it besides just increasing the cash flows to make the assets cover the, the liabilities? Again, I'll, I'll probably talk about that in my blog post at infinitiesreallybig.com. And again, either next video or in a couple videos, I'll look into that with Mathematica. 
let me just end this video by showing you this graphically. What I've got here is the graph of H of I. This H of I is plugged into the calculator here. You can compare. So what you see here is, first of all, X is 75.3592 plus Y times 1 plus I to the negative 3 power. Type in as 1 plus X to the negative 3 power. Then minus 500, 1 plus I to the negative 1 power. Minus 1,000. 1 plus i to the negative 4 power, and if you graph this function, which is h of i, on a window approximately like this, notice it's centered on point 0.1, uh, where y goes from, say, negative 5 to 5, you will see that the graph, I've already got it there, is concave down, the second derivative is negative. You see it does have a local maximum at i equals point 0.1. We really want a local minimum instead, because this is showing the graph of h of i is negative, which is telling us our assets are in a deficit position with respect to our liabilities. We really want a surplus. We really want the graph to be positive instead. Thanks for watching.